Hey and welcome to part 9 of this Django tutorial series. Today we are going to set up HTML for the sign up and login page and also add product images to the project. So we can begin with HTML or page for the sign up. So we can begin with the view. So if you scroll up and find the core app, then inside the views we are going to create the view there. So you can add it below the front page or wherever you want actually. So just a simple for now, def sign up and we pass in the request parameter. Let me just say return render request core slash sign up dot html. So this is just for now we will fix much more here later. But for now we just want to set up the html so this will be enough for now. So now that that is done, we can go to the urls.py file and import this. So from core.views import sign up, and then we can add it at the top below front page. So path sign up slash then the name which is sign up, and we also specify a name sign up. So we can use it in the menu and similar. So then we can save this. If you now try to access the website and go to slash sign up and we'll get a template that does not exist. So that's the next step. So let's go back to the editor and then we find the core, templates core and in here we create a new file called signup.html. So instead of writing all of the HTML we can make a copy of for example shop.html and just copy the contents and paste it in here. You can remove a lot of this actually all the way up here but instead of saying max width 6 times XL, I just want to say max width LG, so it's not as width. And we want to add, have the flex and the flex wrap, but we don't need the items. Start and the padding can just be set to P-6, so we get spacings on all of the sides. And then in here, so if I save now, go back and refresh, you will see that it's at least working, but there's no content yet. And then in here I want to have a grey background with some spacings inside. So here I add a new div class with full, so it fills out all of this div. And then bg grey 100, you can set the padding to 6 here as well. And then rounded dash xl, so we get some rounded corners in this div. So if we save now, refresh, it looks like this. Perfect. Then I just want to add a title in here. So h1 class and then I want to set this to be mb-6 so we get some space below this down to the form text-2xl so it's a little bit big sign up and close the h1 so now it looks like this so below here now I want the field for the email the password repeat password and then a simple error message and a submit button so let's begin with the form tag. Form method should be post. Oops. And then the action can be set to dot, which is the page we are on. And then here we say div. I want one div for each of the elements in here. And then a label email. Oops, email. And then below here I say input type email. And class. I want this to fill out all of this element, so we w dash full mt2, so we get some spacings from this up to the label py dash 4, so we get some spacing inside the input element and px dash 6, so we get spacings on the sides in this. I want to set the background to white and rounded XL, so we get rounded corners and then just close that. So if I save now go back and refresh, you'll see that it looks like this with the label and then it fills out the whole screen. Also has spacings here and there. And then I can just make a copy of this for the password. So copy this, go down, paste, so password. I want to use type password here so it's not visible for other users. So if I refresh now, you'll see that you have this here as well. Perfect. And then I want one field for the repeat password field as well. So repeat password and save. 
If I refresh now, you see that we don't have space between these. But instead of adding this to each of these, we can just add a clause to the form space dash y 3. So if I save now and refresh, you'll see that we get space between each of the div elements in this form. Great. And then below here, I want a button. So add a new div element button clause py-4 and px-6 rounded xl text should be white and I want the background to be purple so bg-purple-500 and when we hover this I want it to be slightly darker so hover bg-purple-700 and then we just say submit for the text so now we have a great button there nice and then i just want a simple error message here if there are any er error messages in the form so one more div div class and then here i said p-6 bg red 200 it's very light red color text red 800 which is a dark text color and rounded xl and then here I just say p, this is an error, this will be changed a little bit when we actually implement this, but it will look like this at least. Great. So now we have the HTML for the sign up page. Next is the login page, but we can go to the to-do list and set this task to done. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to all of my patrons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link in the description below. So then we can continue with this task. These pages are very similar, so I can just make a copy of this template, but we can begin with the view first. So in the views.py for the core app, make a copy of this and replace this with login and also the template with login. And then we can go to the urls.py, import it there, login, copy this path just remove or replace everything here login and login and save so now i can go to slash login and i get the template does not exist great so we can fix that by just making a copy so if i find signup.html copy all of this create a new file and save it as login.html here i don't want the repeat password and we can replace the title sign up with login instead. If I save now, go back and refresh, it looks like this, just like the sign up page, but that is all of the HTML we need for the login page. Great! So let's head back to the to do list again, set this task to done. And then the last task for this part is to add product images. So we can begin by going to settings.py because we need to add some configuration here. At the bottom we already have something for the static files but I like to have the media files here as well. So we need one attribute or one variable called media url equals slash media. This is the url we will be using in the browser. And media root, this is where the files are put on your computer base there slash media and then and this with the slash like that base there is defined up here and this is the folder where we have the manage.py file and the root of the folder Django doesn't handle media files very well in production but since we are now just doing some tests we can use the built-in web server for this as well so if you go to urls.py we need to make a few changes here need to import two things from Django from django.conf import settings so that we can use the variables we just added and from django.contrib sorry dot conf dot urls dot static import static this is a function from Django just want to move it up here so we have this alphabetically and then here I can say static, so now we use this function we imported, settings.media url, comma, document root equals settings dot 
media root and save. So that's everything we need here now. We, now we can actually use media files on the server. So the next step then is to do some changes to the database model for the products. So if we go to product and find the models.py file. Here we have on two more fields now for, su uh, for supporting image and the thumbnail. So image equals models.image field. And here we need to pass in something called upload to. So this is the URL on the server, uploads. So this folder will be created inside the media folder automatically by Django. And then we can say blank equals true and null equals true in case you don't want image for a certain product. Then we can make a copy of this and then just rename this to thumbnail. So the thumbnail will be automatically generated by Django when we save or try to access the image the first time. And to do this we need to create some functionality down here in the model. But first we can just save this and update the database. As you can see here now we get an error because we need to install something called Pillow to use images in Django. Pillow is a Python library for helping us support images. So pip3 install Pillow and hit enter. So now this will download and install and that was it. So now I can run this. No, we don't need to run, but I need to run python3 manage.py make migrations. And then you will see here that we try to add two new fields. And then python3 manage.py migrate to actually run the scripts. And then we can run the server again so we have it running. So then we can go back to the database model. And then I want to create a new function here, just like we did with the get display price I want a function for getting the thumbnail so def get thumbnail self and then we check that if the thumbnail exists then we can just return the URL for that so if self dot thumbnail which points to this field then we can say return self dot thumbnail dot URL so then we get the full path to this but if it's not, we need to render or generate this, so else. And then we need to check that the image is, image is set. And if self.image, then we know that we actually can generate a thumbnail. Then we say self.thumbnail equals self.make thumbnail. We will create this function soon. Self.image. And then we say self.save to save this database model. And then we can just say return self.thumbnail.url. But if there are no image, I want to return a placeholder image. So else return https colon slash slash via.placeholder.com slash 240x240.jpg. Like that. So now we have the functionality to get the thumbnail. But if there are image and there are no thumbnail, we need to generate this. Then we need one more function here. Def make thumbnail. Then we pass in self, the image we want to generate a thumbnail for, and then a default size. Size equals 300, 300. So it's a square image. Then we just say img equals image dot open image. You can see here that I get an error because we haven't imported this from Pillow yet. So if I go to the top, you can import it from Peel, which is short for Pillow, import image. And then the error is gone. And then I want to convert this to RGB, img.convert, RGB, and then img.thumbnail. Sorry, and pass in size. So then this will generate this automatically for us. <laughs> so now this image is created in the memory, but we still need to save it to the server. So we need to get the input from the server by saying temp io equals bytes io. So we create a new instance of this class, which we also need to import at the top. From io, this is built into Python by the way, import 
bytes.io. And then we can use this by saying ing.save. So now we save this. Temp.io. So we use this data. Save it as JPEG. Like that. And then the quality equals 85, which is the default quality for a thumbnail. And then we want to get this thumbnail from the server and then return it up to this function. So now we say thumbnail equals file thumb.io name equals image, sorry, image.name, which is the name we got up here. And return thumbnail. So now I see that I get a new error here because we haven't imported file from Python yet. And this can be imported from Django. So if you just go up, then we say from django.core.files import file. Now we can save this function. So we can try to see here that we got no errors. We can sign into the admin interface with the user created in one of the previous episodes. So now we have the products here. And if I go into the brown leather sofa, we get two new here. You can see these are not bold, so they are not uh, required. So if I now try to find a file for the image, images, and then just select one, then save. And now this was saved successfully, perfect. And then if I go to the root, you will see that we have a new folder here, media, and then uploads, and in there we have the new image. This is just a full size because we haven't generated the thumbnail yet. So to do that, so now we need to go to the front page, so product list item, where we show this demo image. Here we can say SRC, and then we just say product.get thumbnail. So then we use the function we just created, thumbnail, and save. So if I refresh in here now, sorry, go to the front page. Then you see that we got an image there for this product, and these are placeholder images. And if I go back here now, you will see that we get a new uploads folder where we have the thumbnail files. You see this is 1.3 megabyte, and this is just 16 kilobytes. So now we have product images for the e-commerce. I just want to implement this on the product detail page as well. So product.html. Then I can find the image. Instead of saying one.jpg, save it there. And if I try to go into this now, you will see it there. Great. But that's actually not correct because here I want to use the image because we don't want to show the thumbnail there. Image.url and save. So now we have images as well. Nice. So then I can set this task as well to done. And that was it for this part. Hope you liked it. And if you did, please hit like below and leave a comment if you have any questions. See you in the next video.